You see that equation? So this is the equation for the population of something over time. And it turns out that for different values of R, it can be very sensitive to the initial conditions. And this is what we have with chaos. So I'm going to show you how to create a bifurcation diagram that you see in these in these uh, physics stuff on chaos. OK, so let's just say I start with some population percent X uh, and then I have a rate of growth R <clears throat> and then I have a limiting case here. You know, so imagine you have some species and if you have too many of them, they can't keep growing because they're going to run out of resources. So you get this population thing. So the new after one step, we can calculate the population based on the previous steps and it depends on R. Let's just start off and explore this equation by plotting it for different values of R and seeing what happens. It will be fun. OK, so we're going to do this in Python. I'm going to do this really quickly and then we'll make the bifurcation diagram and I'll show you what it is. OK, so here we go into Python. So I'm using WebVPython. I will give you the code. And let's go ahead and make a graph. G1 is a graph. I'm going to give it, I'm going to plot just x as a function of n, right? So what happens to the population over time? That's what we're plotting for this first graph. So the x title is just going to be equal to n, and the y title is going to be equal to y, I mean x. And now I, I do want to do some things here. I want to make the width uh, 400, the height 200. <clears throat> and then I want to set my uh, vertical scale from 0 to 1. I don't want that to change. And that will be useful later. So I'm going to say y min is equal to 0. Uh, y ma Am I still on the thing? I can't even see. Yep. Y max is equal to 1. OK. Now I need something to plot. So I'm going to say f1 is a type of g, g curve, which makes a line. Color equals color dot blue. Now I need a starting value for x. I need to count my ends, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's just set x is equal to uh, 0 0.2. Uh, r is going to be equal to 0 0.6. I'm just picking stuff here. And then n is 0. And oops. And then n is 50. Let's plot 50 points. <clears throat> so while n is less than n, uh, I need to calculate my new value of r. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I have the 4 there. OK. So x equals 4 times r times x times 1 minus x. So just a quick reminder, if you're not familiar with Python and numerical calculations, this is not an equal sign. This is a make equal sign, right? So it takes the value of x, which I didn't put the times there, and it multiplies this out and then sets that to the new value. So I'm changing the value of x. OK, that's why those x's don't cancel. Now let's go ahead and plot that, f1.plot. Uh, on the horizontal axis, I want n. On the vertical axis, I want x. And then I need to increase my value of n. n equals n plus 1. Let's run this thing. OK, so there you go. So it starts right here, and it increases to some value, and then it reaches a stability point, right? It's stable. Uh, <clears throat> what if I change? Notice right here, I want to I show you something right here. Here I have uh, a value of 0.589. That's or 0.58. Okay. What if I start with a, a different initial condition? Let's say I start with x of uh, let's say 0.4. I get the same value. Notice it's the same thing. Okay. So it doesn't really depend on the initial conditions. I get the same stability depending on that value of r. Now we could change our value of r. Let's put the r at uh, 0.7 and run it. And we get a different value. Notice a different value up here of 0.64. OK, so let's just for fun, what I want to do is to start off with the value of x is, let's say, 0.1. And then I'm going to change my value of r and plot this and see what happens. We can make an animated graph. So if you haven't made an animated graph in Python, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's put r at uh, 0.1. I'm going to increase r from 0 to a point 0.1 to, let's see, if I run into point 0.1, does it even work? Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so point 0.1 to, uh, let's say, 1. And let's leave x as 0.4. So then what I'm going to do is to repeat this for different values of r. 
So I need a dr, let's put dr of 0 0.001. And then I'm gonna say, while r is less than one, I'm gonna do the following. Uh, so uh, since we're gonna be making an animated graph, I want to uh, use this rate statement. So this says don't do it faster than 100 loops per second. So we can see how it evolves over time, it's gonna be great. Now the next thing I want to do is to reset my var values. So I'm gonna say n is equal to zero. Uh, and then to make an animated graph, I'm going to need to um, have a list to plot with. And also I need this, let's call this xs, the starting value. So, because I want to reset my x to back to my starting value. So x is equal to xs, and then f1 data is my plotting list. It's just empty. So I empty it out so that I can plot it. Now I want to do all this stuff. So I'm just going to tab and dent that. Uh, oops. What the heck? Okay, tab and dent that. I'm gonna calculate my new x value. I'm not gonna plot right here. What I'm gonna do is to add that data to a list. F1 data is F1 data plus my value of uh, in x. That's right, okay. And then I'm gonna do that still. And then once I get to the end, then I want to plot my data. So F1 dot data equals F1 data. So F1 data is just what I call that. Um, N equals zero, just double check and I got everything. Okay, now I need to increase my value of R, or it won't work. So I'm gonna say R equals R plus DR, right? Otherwise this loop will go on forever. I think that works. Let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, good. So I'm increasing my value of R and it's stable, stable, stable stable and then it gets unstable and that's kind of cool okay but that's just the first 50 right we'd actually want to do this for uh, later values and now we're gonna that's what we're gonna do with our bifurcation diagram okay what I want to do is to run this for let's say 200 in and but just to get rid of all this transient stuff at the beginning and then we're going to uh, <clears throat> let's put this on the board so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our function and I'm going to run it for uh, n to 200. And then I'm going to throw that away. Throw it away. I don't really care about what happens at the beginning. I want long-term stability. And then what I'm going to do is to run it for, let's say, 50 more times. So n plus 50 times. And I'm going to plot that. And this is for a particular value of r. r equals 0 0.1. So do this and then plot these values. Uh, this will be... Uh, x versus r. But I'm going to plot 50 times, I'm going to keep plotting the same value of r. So I, I should be getting vertical points like that. Unless it's stable, then I just get the same values, right? As I change n, I get the same value, which we saw earlier. And then I'm going to uh, increase r equals r plus dr, and then do it all again. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to get this bifurcation diagram. It's going to be great. So I'm just going to use the same graph right here. Uh, <clears throat> I guess I should write a new one. Let's save this. And let's make a new, uh, a new, a new code. New. Okay. So new code. New trinket. Oops, I'm, I didn't switch. Sorry. You're just looking at me. Uh, new trinket web v Python because it has good graphing that I like. Okay, so let's just say uh, G1 equals graph, and I'm gonna plot um, N versus, no, I'm gonna plot, what am I plotting here? I'm plotting uh, X final versus R. That's what I'm doing. So X title is gonna be equal to R. Y title is equal to X final. I do need the width. Uh, let's just do 400 by 200. Okay, now I want to make uh, dots. I'm gonna plot dots, I don't wanna plot lines. So we're gonna say F1 is G dots. And let's give it a color of blue, cause I like blue. Okay, so now what we need to do is to pick our starting uh, X value, uh, <clears throat> and then we're gonna, and our starting R value. So let's just start with R of 0.5 and X of 0.5. So X is 0 0.5. Is that x start? No, that's fine. And then r is 0 
because nothing happens when it's really lower than that. And then dr is going to be 0.00. .00. I did 0 0.001, but we can try that, changing that later. Then I need to pick what my transient number is going to be. So let's say in transient is 200. So once I get it, I'm going to throw away everything I get to 200. That's the plan. Now we're going to make a loop. Am I even on the right thing here? Okay. Now we're going to make a loop uh, while r is less than 1. And then in that loop, I want to redo my counting, right? So I'm going to say n is equal to 0. Um, and then I need to reset my x. So let's say x equals 0 0.5. <clears throat> and then I'm going to say while n is less than nt, I want to calculate my value of x. So I need to start with some value. So x equals 4 times r times x times 1 minus x and then increase my value of n. n equals n plus 1. And I'm just going to throw all this stuff away. It doesn't really matter, right? I don't really care about that. Now what I'm going to do is to do it for uh, 50 more times. And these I do care about. So while n is less than nt plus 50, do the same thing. x equals 4 times r times x times 1 minus x. And I'm going to plot that. So f1.plot. Uh, I'm going to plot, what am I plotting? R and X, right? R, X. So it should be a vertical dots if they change. If they don't change, it'll be right on top of each other. Now increase my value of N. N equals N plus 1. Okay. And now I need to increase my value of R. R equals R plus DR and reset the whole thing. That should work. Let's see if this does work. There you go. Okay, now we need to fix this. Our dots are too big. So we can make smaller dots, let's say, up here in the curve. I'm going to say radius is 0 0.2. There we go. Look at that. Let's make a little bit smaller, maybe. Radius of 0 0.1. Okay, I like that. Now, <clears throat> let's make it a little bit better. I'm going to in decrease my dr size. Okay, um, I'm going to have to make smaller dots. So let's play 0, 2. Is that too small? Okay, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Uh, let's do one more thing. Uh, here I'm plotting 50 points after, uh, after the transient. Let's do 100. So every value of r will have 100 points. Maybe they're right on top of each other, but maybe they're not. Okay, there we go. So this is your bifurcation diagram. This says that as I increase r, I get the same final value up until this point right here. And then I get a, what's called period doubling. So at this point, at the end, I'm going to get one of two values. I'm going to get either uh, a value up here or value down there. And those values will change over time, but I, I basically split the possible outcomes. And then it splits again up here, right? So now I'll get four possible values. But then after this, I just get any number of things. It could be pretty much anything. Now notice these right here, these spaces, it goes back to stable for a very, very small value of r, and it does that for larger values of r right there, and then becomes unstable again. So if you're going to do anything with chaos, you have to make this bifurcation diagram. And here's how you can see how to do that in Python. So that's two codes I did. I'm going to give you both of those codes uh, and you can have them. But there you go. And really, this is for me because I forget how to do this stuff. So when I go to do this next year and I can't remember how to make this diagram, this is how you make that diagram. So this is for you, Rhett. You're welcome, Rhett. I'll talk to you later, Rhett.